Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And so begins our proclamation of the Easter good news of Jesus rising from the dead, and so shall we. So I just want to say thank you to everyone this morning, those who are joining us on our, on our Facebook live stream, those who are overhearing us on our 90.9 FM radio uh, frequency. So welcome to all. Um, <clears throat> special thanks to everyone who makes this happen, from the altar and the altar guild to the musicians and music to the technology and the sound and the video. So thank you for making all this possible today, and especially for you, as you have gathered to worship on this most holy and special Easter day. So let us begin. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus calls us by name. And we cry out, risen Lord, Savior, Jesus the Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you are able and let us join in song. And so we rise together in Christ in the glory of Easter as we remember our baptisms in which we also too were raised with Christ. And so we begin, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, 
We have passed from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. And for this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. And we thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through, through the earth, through the city, and through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. And now these waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm the troubled waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. So we sing. This is a feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, and blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Risen Lord, we celebrate today that you are alive, not just for Mary and the disciples, but you are alive for us today. Live in us and shape us so that others may come to know you. Amen. 
So I'd like to welcome all the children to come forward for the children's sermon at this time. So come on down. We have a marvelous surprise today. Okay, I'm going to each... Each of you can have an Easter egg, but don't open it. Don't open it yet. All right. Here we go. Don't open it because it's got a surprise. Here we go. Here, you guys just grab an Easter egg. Quick, quick. Okay, here we go. Make sure everyone gets one and make sure we don't forget anybody, especially those in the back here because sometimes you guys get shy. Oh, here we go. All right. All right. Let's open up the Easter eggs and see our big surprise. What's in there? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> what? Oh, man, you should see the looks I am getting. <laughs> well, you know, that's the way it was when Mary and the disciples went to the tomb for Jesus. They looked in the tomb, and it was empty, and they were sad and disappointed. But they knew God was alive. Yeah, yeah, so they knew, and so it took them a while until they realized, here's another egg, have another egg. Oh, here's some in it. Okay, here we go. Okay, who doesn't have one? All right. Everybody, well, you got to get one. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on. There we go. Did we forget anybody? No. Okay, everybody got an egg? Yeah. Now open up this one. It's something in it. <laughs> Here's something. Yay! And they, Jesus appeared to them, and they knew Jesus was alive. So if it's okay with your moms and dads, you can go back to your pews now and enjoy Easter. Anybody else want one? Diane, Diane, can you catch? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. And so let us sing. From Isaiah. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. 
for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And a reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Please stand as we sing the Alleluia on the screen. <clears throat> have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Easter Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. You may be seated for the reading of the Gospel so that we can hear it once again. So early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. And so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb, and the two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And he bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the other linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. And then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And Jesus said to them, and she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, 
Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and, my, and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. So sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. On that first Easter morn, nobody expected resurrection. Never mind that Jesus had been telegraphing this a whole way through the story of John's gospel. And of course, as readers of this gospel, we know this. We know what's going to happen. We know how this ends. But as this Easter gospel unfolds, on that first Easter morn, nobody expected resurrection. Nobody anticipated Easter. Therefore, John's Easter gospel is the account on how that first Easter morning, how everybody got it wrong. And the one thing they all can agree on is that Jesus is not there. Never, they never expected resurrection. And the one fact that they all agree on is that death is real. And to that we all say, Amen. We know what you're talking about. I mean, Jesus has died. And death overwhelms any other possibility. So, I preach a lot of funeral sermons. And I always do so in the face of the overwhelming evidence that death is the one reality that we all agree on, we all know. By contrast, preaching resurrection and Easter often feels like whistling in the wind. Do we really expect anything else? So let us explore the evidence of this gospel reading, this Easter gospel which tries to get us to counter death's reality. So one, the stone is rolled away. The evidence indicates body snatching, not resurrection. So Mary goes for help. Two, Jesus and the other disciples arrive, grave clothes lying in a heap, but no body. I mean, Lazarus also left his grave clothes lying behind. You think they would have remembered that one? Three, the other disciple, who is not named, who is always referred to as the beloved disciple, and we think that John put this unnamed disciple in there so that we too can be part of this story. We are part of what's going on, and so we too enter, and we see and believe. But then, this beloved disciple doesn't say anything. He must have been a Lutheran. So he gives up and leaves. He goes home. And yet Mary remains as the most faithful disciple of Jesus, loyal to the end. So five. She looks in the tomb. She sees angels. You know, you think she would get the hint. You think the angels could have told her that Jesus had risen from the dead. But no, they ask why she was weeping. The angels must have been male. Enter Jesus. Still, Mary does not believe the evidence even when it's standing right in front of her. So, seven. Jesus asks her, what are you looking for? Or who are you looking for? Really, who are we looking for? Do, who do we expect this morning? The gardener? Eight. Death can be the only reasonable conclusion if you have carried him away. Nine. 
Finally, Jesus confronts Mary and her unbelief. Jesus calls out to her by name, Mary, and she gets it. She believes. But this is only the beginning of faith for her. And those of us who hear this Easter gospel again today, who hear this first proclamation, the first Easter sermon, I have seen the Lord. And she proclaims the totally unexpected, that resurrection conquers death reality. Death is defeated. Christ is risen. But that's not the end of the story. So I am mindful today that this may be the last Easter sermon I may ever preach. And I often joke that why go to the bother of preaching this? Because, you know, it always ends the same way. In the empty tomb and a risen Lord. I mean, you all know it. So what are we doing here? We are here because sin and death still haunts our world. War and the death of innocence still happen on a daily, even hourly basis. Grief and fear of death haunt us like a poltergeist. We too have stood at too many gravesides and buried too many loved ones. And so we are more like those who came to the tomb on that first Easter morn than we would want to know or even care to admit. I mean, how, how can this be true? Accordingly, Easter and Christ is risen. It is the very foundation of our faith. Without Easter, we don't have anything to talk about. As it is because of Easter and because of resurrection, we have good news to share with the world. Good news that God brings life out of death. Good news that Jesus defeats the powers that haunt us. Jesus defeats the power of sin, death, and the devil. Christ is risen is our cry of victory. But back to preaching this. Because how else are people supposed to know? I mean, I have often referred to preaching like pushing a huge stone up a, ne a never-ending hill. And at some time, at some point, someone else is going to have to take over because it's too important to stop. We can't do it now. We can't give up. Because such proclamation that started with Mary and somehow either because of us or in spite of us, the good news of Easter has survived all these centuries and we can't stop now. It's too important because we have to believe in something greater than what we know. And that is the power of sin and death. Therefore, the next time you look in the mirror, remember this Easter good news and ask yourself, if not me, then who? Reflect on how Jesus has been present in your life. What Easter good news comes from that reflection that you are willing to share? So for me, it started a long time ago as someone who was quite young in a congregation much like this one with a pastor and its peoples who kept preaching, Christ is risen, and no doubt they meant it, and somehow I believed it. So here I am. And you all have to keep preaching this. You can't let Mary and all the witnesses of the, re of the resurrection, you cannot let all the preachers down. Because everyone who believes the power of sin and death is ultimate. And all those who believe that have got it wrong. God and Jesus has surprised us all. Today is God's victory. Today is our victory over sin and death. Come on, keep on preaching it. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let us sing.
Let us please rise as we are able as we join in confessing our Easter faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And so with the whole church we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we then pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray. O oh Lord, the disciples couldn't run fast enough to spread the good news of Easter. So too, light the, a fire under us to carry out your work and your word and proclamation of the Easter good news. So risen Lord, hear our prayer. And flowers and fields and skies are alive with the joy of new life and renewal, a reflection of your resurrection from the dead that surrounds us each and every day. Join our praise with all of creation and make of us all one chorus of earthly joy to you. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. And on this day filled with eggs, chocolate, family meals, and gatherings, may we linger long enough at your empty tomb to renew our joy and our faith at your rising that a miracle has changed us and everything, and it stands now at the center of our Christian lives, centered in you. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. And in your resurrection we are made new, brought to life from everything that would dampen our joy and depress our spirits. Revive us and heal us in those places where we still long for wholeness. And send your loving and healing spirit, especially to those who we name before you, in the silence of our hearts. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. And it is for this day that all your saints gather in eternal praise around your throne. Keep us ever mindful that in you we have our lives. And because of you, death has no power over us. And so may the hope and power of res resurrection be to all who grieve, especially as we remember Joey Pult Pult Partlow and all who grieve him and all whom we continue to grieve this day. Risen Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. And we rejoice as Nolan J. Bloom was raised to new life in the waters of baptism yesterday. And we pray your blessings upon him and his life of faith and his entire family. Risen Lord. Hear our prayer. Christ is risen indeed. Hear all our prayers and gather them into one great joyful offering of praise to the glory of our resurrected Savior. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So I invite you to turn to your neighbor or wave to your neighbor. Make sure you include the people who are joining us on the live stream and the camera that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us share the Easter good news. And as you do that, you may be seated and we receive our offering, which, we, which you have left on the way in or you may leave on the way out. Again, thank you for the gifts of God's people, for the work of God's people. And so let us join in our offering Him. Thine is the glory.
So let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself away to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. And we give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. How on the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory to your holy church now and forever as we sing. Amen, amen, amen. Let us rise as we join in praying together our Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught. And so we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ gave everything so that we might live and he is alive. Our Lord has risen from the grave and in this meal he shares eternal salvation with all who partake. Come to this feast, indulge in Christ's goodness for the sake of Jesus himself. Come to the table. Amen. And you may be seated and those who are helping with communion may come forward. Um, communion will be by two stations. Um, the ushers will direct you. Um, please note in the middle of the tray there's grape juice for all that would prefer that. And then we have um, in a separate bag we have a little uh, gluten-free wafers. If you need those, just let us know. All is ready. Come to the...
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able and let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection and though and through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so God, the author and giver of life, Christ, the living cornerstone and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen.
Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. So thank you for worshiping this Easter morn. Um, there's some coffee in the fellowship hall for those that may want to hang around a little bit and visit on this day. Um, otherwise, we go our way rejoicing and singing. Um, <clears throat> Alleluia. Jesus is risen. One more time. Christ is risen. He is risen.